Hello, everyone. Welcome to this beautiful spot. Yay. As most of you already know, my name is Corey Northrup. I'm from the Fond du Lac Band of Lake Superior, Chippewa. It's about 30 minutes outside of here, Duluth. But I was born and raised and grew up here in this lovely city, right next to our beautiful Lake Superior. Um, as an indigenous woman, I feel it's my job to support the work that is being done to protect the water and the land for future generations. As a part of that, um, there have been a lot of amazing journeys that people have partaken in that I have joined up with. Um, and today, we're celebrating the end of Bike the Line, which is why the bikes are in front here, um, where my friend Chuck and some of his friends rode from Michigan here today. So let's give them a big round of applause. Great job, guys. Next to Alaska, I think um, Michigan is the biggest state in the union. So that's a huge accomplishment. <laughs> um, they did that to raise awareness for, for Line 5, which is, uh, goes under the Straits of the Mackinac. And we'll hear more um, later on about them and their journey. Another journey that we're celebrating tonight is a horse ride that happens annually for Honor the Earth. Um, they ride against the current of the pipeline on horseback in order to um, demonstrate their opposition. Uh, and this was their fourth year. Um, I was able to partake in that as well. And we'll hear from Annie Humphreys later on about uh, more details in regards to that. Um, the final journey that we are uh, celebrating here tonight is the um, walk against Line 66. Um, and that was done in Wisconsin, which I partook in twice, once around Stevens Point and again um, from LCO in Hayward to here in Superior. Um, a lot of us believe that um, right here is the heart of the black snake that we have heard about in Native American prophecy. And um, I feel like it's so important for us to, to tie all these things in and other fights that are going on, not only in the Great Lakes region, but across the country. And we stand in solidarity with those who are on the front lines right now in North Dakota, fighting, um, considering that they decided uh, to take their money out of the Sandpiper in Minnesota and funnel it over there into North Dakota. We don't believe that it should be moved. We believe that it should not exist. So um, I'm here to represent the walkers for sacred water, sacred land, and I'll talk more about that later. Um, and also we have the gentleman from the Great Lakes Commons who comes from Canada, and he'll talk a little bit more about, uh, about that. Basically the point of tonight is, is just coming together in one space and tying everything together so that we understand that we're not alone in this fight, even if our regions are different, the goal is the same. So I appreciate everybody coming out, enjoying some delicious food, meeting some new people, having some new friends. And with that, I'd like to introduce Jeremy Davis, who's gonna sing us some songs on his uh, hand drum. Part of our journey is very spiritual, and, and we, we first honor the creator, and we honor the spirits that, that are among us. And we do that also with our drum, which we believe is the heartbeat of Mother Earth. So I hope you enjoy it. Oh, bonjour. Beji go gabo nindijini kaz maingo nindo dem nagmi singin donji ba. My name is Jeremy Davis. I'm from Duluth. I'm from the Wolf Clan. Um, I'd like to sing a few songs for you today. First song I'm gonna sing was well, a song we sang for our little round dance at our at our rally in Bismarck for the for uh, the uh, Sacred Stones camp. So this song is really important to us as, and uh, I'd just like to share that with you.
this next song is a woman's song. It's called a sidestep. It's for our jingle dress dancers. And that jingle dress is a healing dress. So I'd like to sing that for you. song for you this is one of uh, this is an honor song this is a song that goes way back to our people this is our thunderbird song
Thank you. Miigwech, Jeremy. Really enjoyed that. Let's clap for Jeremy. Yay! <laughs> One of the things I appreciate the most about Jeremy Davis is he has been on this journey with me every single step of the way. From the first day on November 2nd when we took the Enbridge office to today where we stand before you. Um, right now, I'd like to introduce my friend Chuck. Um, he was the lead organizer on the Bike the Line, and he's going to come and uh, talk to you about, about that. Hi everyone, it's really cool to see you all here. Thanks for coming. Um, yeah, so um, it's it's really nice to see a lot of people who are like we're we're really inspired by the call to like three pipeline journeys coming together to talk. It's I don't know if you all know this, but like these pipeline journeys were pretty interesting because there were some that were on horseback, some that were on foot, and we were on bike, um, and we're all doing Enbridge pipelines while the Keystone XL issue was going like through the envir the environmental movement was paying attention to it. Enbridge snuck in a lot of different pipeline projects and we're paying the price for that years later, but we're all catching up now. And we're all organizing against them, um, putting snakes all across the continent. Um, so this project um, was designed a little over a year ago um, at a fireside conversation. There was, it was myself and two other people were sitting around and um, talking about what we can do to um, oppose and um, oppose line five and to like protect the Great Lakes uh, because it's already it's an existing pipeline. It's been around for 63 years. We couldn't figure out a way to uh, really um, take up that challenge. It's um, it's a different kind of battle when the pipeline's already in the ground. So. Um, we basically, we realized that we needed to connect with community members that lived along the pipeline route. And basically from that, and as well as from a desire to burn as little fossil fuel as possible, we um, designed a bike trip. Um, so yeah, um, we've been biking the line for about 57 days now. <laughs> we've uh, been going since. We started on May 25th, the same day that Enbridge had a spill response exercise in Marysville, Michigan. We started right in front of them and actually announced the trip to them in person. <laughs> and um, soon after, we, uh, we biked out of Marysville um, and in the outskirts, we, the, first, um, the very first person we spoke with ended up being one of our most ardent supporters and we're still in communication. Thankfully, we've made a lot of contacts and it's really awesome to say that there are some um, there's a couple here who actually lives on the Line 5 route. Uh, maybe they'll introduce themselves to you. <laughs> um, yeah, and um, they, um, so like, um, the idea of the trip was literally to go door to door. So basically, we routed ourselves from one house to the next on, to, from every, on every, like, to every house that lives on the pipeline route. That was like 700 to 900 homes. We, uh, we overestimate, we, we miscalculate a lot of things. So I don't actually know what the numbers are. I don't actually know what the distances are. The pipeline is 645 miles. Um, we must have traveled at least 750, 800, maybe 1,000 or something. It's, it's not clear to us. Um, we've, uh, it's, it's been a very tiring trip, but thankfully, I'm, I feel like I've been really blessed, and I feel like maybe the other people have been really blessed for this trip to have been very, um, very doable with very little resources. So I calculated recently that this trip has cost us about $1,000, and there was various reasons for that. Um, the tri <laughs> this trip was completed by some of the sketchiest people I've ever met, and I don't even mean that in a bad way. I mean sketchy as in living minimally. Living minimally in this day and age is really sketchy. So for example, eating out of trash. <laughs> we did that a lot. Um, and I'm actually proud of that because when you're eating out of trash, you're offsetting um, food that goes into the system that, you know, th the system that we're trying to undo and stuff. It's a little weird and 
a few years ago it would have been really embarrassing for me to admit, but um, that kept our costs down. We definitely did have enough support and funding from the community to spend a lot more, but um, that money thankfully is going to go to more serious issues involving my cat's legal battles. Um, so, um, yeah, we've been guerrilla camping. Um, does anyone, um, raise your hand if you know what guerrilla camping is. All right, it has nothing to do with the animal gorilla. It just means looking for a place to camp and just going, going randomly based on where you are. And thankfully, um, because the Upper Peninsula is so beautiful and is so forested, as well as a lot of lower um, Michigan and Wisconsin, um, that was very easy and viable to do. Um, there are a lot of mosquitoes in the forests, lots of mosquitoes, but we had <laughs> tents, thankfully, so that was, very, uh, that was uh, not a problem. Um, we were also kind of concerned about um, getting hit because like on US2, we were going to be on US2 for a long portion of the trip. Um, and we'd heard recently of people who died um, when a random drunk driver hit a team of cyclists in Kalamazoo. Um, there's no stopping that. But that's true for anything in our lives. Like you can't, you can't stop any of that. You, you, can't, you can't let that stop you either. Um, as far as, yeah, so I'm really thankful for how the trip happened. Um, I think... Um, we we probably pull. It was a lot more bang for a buck than Enbridge could ever pull off with all the with whatever they're doing. Actually, one thing I want to say is really exciting is that um, Enbridge had one of their barbecues in June, and they'd actually been giving out a lot of merch. And a community member that ended up supporting us found some of their merch, and one of their merch was an adapter, like a like a ch surge protector. And uh, you know, when you're in a coffee shop and you have a team of five people, and you only have this coffee shop only has one outlet over there, you don't have enough outlets. To, um, to, for everyone to charge their phones, but thanks to Enbridge, we, <laughs> we, carried, we carried around that Enbridge adapter, we taped a sticker over it that said shut down line five over the Enbridge logo, and then it was okay, and we continued using that adapter whenever we needed it. <laughs> so anyway, I, I, don't, uh, I guess I don't really know um, what else to say, but um, uh, we, we've made connections with people all along the route. Uh, we established a mailing list for community members that live on the pipeline route um, to connect with each other, and um, we're going to database them and like start connect. We, we have relationships, and we're going to continue to work with them. And um, at, going on the trip, like I started having this premonition that maybe this needs to happen next year. Um, I'm definitely not going to be organizing it. I'm actually tr attempting to disappear from the face of activism or whatever for the next several years, maybe. But like, um, but I'm hoping that it continues because I think um, there was a lot of power in making and establishing relationships with, with people who live on a pipeline route, and I think a lot can come from that. And if it happens next year, they'll be familiar with it, and then you know they'll start you know planning more things, and more things can happen. So I'm really hoping the trip. I'm really hoping the trip continues. I'm really hoping I'm not that I don't have anything to do with it. Um, but um, yeah, and I'm really grateful to see you all here and um, available for any questions if anyone has any. But um, um, yeah, and also I just want to give shout outs to the other riders who have been with us. Um, Yona, um, he came from Boston. He's standing right there with the star right back there. Yona made this trip really, really possible by being the only person besides myself to committing to complete the trip. Um, besides, uh, if, if not for that, we would have been constantly wondering whether or not the trip were possible, because it's not really safe to do it as one person. Um, and Zach joined us from Ashland and has been really indispensable and is throwing in a lot of his own energy and stuff, and we're going to be rolling with it as the months go on. Um, <laughs> he's right. <laughs> Yeah, so thanks again for y'all coming, um, and uh, feel free to talk with any of us if you have any questions. And there's a bunch of my cats. Um, the, this trip was organized by the Michigan Coalition Against Tar Sands, um, which uh, is a group that's been fighting Enbridge for years and has taken a few felonies for it. Um, and so, um, yeah, they're available too if you'd like to talk with them. All right, well, thanks, yeah.